All right, here we are live back. Okay. All right, here we are live, back at the uh, the Raw, back at the Raw. So I'm interviewing Ags from Brighton. Go on, Brighton. Hi. Yeah, as you know, I'm Ags from Brighton Cannabis Club. Uh, we're a club that's been around in approximately about four years now. Um, we have over 400 members now, and we do pop-up events across the city of Brighton uh, using different venues to do social evenings and gatherings for cannabis users. Okay, well nice of you to come up here. Were you telling me earlier about uh, the Brighton Pride thing? Yeah, Green yeah. Pride, something that's in its fourth year now. Um, this year was our most successful. We had three and a half thousand people turned up to a central location in Brighton. It's a main park, Preston Park. Um, the first year we probably had maybe 120 people so over the course of four years, we've risen that now to three and a half thousand people. Oh, right, so you're flying the flag, bro. So what have you got up here? What have you got a little stall? Or you got a set up up here? Yeah, we've got a booth here, and we're part of the United Kingdom Cannabis Social Clubs. Okay, uh, right. So we're here doing a tomorrow in the seminar zone. If you want to come down tomorrow, okay. if you want to come so down tomorrow, um, there's a whole lot of talks going on in the seminar zone tomorrow. All right, so you got to catch us all live tomorrow. All right, easy.
Excuse us, we're just having some uh, technical difficulty. Getting there. So are we are we good to go, guys? Thank you, Greg. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nathaniel Loxley. Um, I'm from Vitality Hemp. I started uh, Vitality Hemp about three years ago. Uh, so I've been researching for the last four or five years, kind of really getting into uh, industrial hemp. Um, uh, as, as obviously you can, you can imagine when you start researching it, it's, uh, it's a fascinating topic. Um, and it's really, really important uh, to be at events like this, uh, to see how the, the cannabis industry has kind of come on leaps and bounds and there's so much energy getting put into it. Um, so thanks to Greg and, and James and everyone that's been putting on Product Earth. Uh, it's, it's fascinating to, to see, yeah, such, such a combined force. Um, which is what we're, we're trying to emulate in the hemp industry, which I'll touch on in a bit. <clears throat> so it's, it's great to see everyone here together uh, to kind of celebrate cannabis and, and hemp um, in its many vices. Um, so we're, we started, like I said, three years ago, um, and we wanted to grow in the UK um, industrial hemp uh, to, to bring it back into... Um, well, to, to, to grow more, because uh, we're at the moment we're importing so much, um, and as soon as I started researching and researching, um, I realised that we, we needed to be growing more. Um, so, just try and look. What slide we're on. So we're we're aiming to to bring re responsible products that empower uh, the the individual. Um, obviously, for health and nutrition is very important. Uh, but also understanding the endocannabinoid system um, that we, we all have. Uh, so it's understanding the, the uses that we can uh, put hemp into. There's over 50,000 different products to be made. Um, and we've had a relationship with this plant for thousands of years. Uh, so the last 80 years of prohibition have, have really kind of uh, disassociated the, the, the benefits that we've always had uh, from, from hemp and, and cannabis. Uh, so it's, it's kind of reprogramming uh, and through education um, and movements like the United Patients Alliance and the, the Cannabis Social Club movement on the cannabis uh, aspect, it's, it takes that awareness and kind of campaigning to really educate people into kind of uh, getting rid of that demon kind of stigma, stigmatization um, and to kind of actually get beyond the media and kind of see... see the plant for its true uh, capacity um, and it's uh, it's obviously multi layers because um, the nutrition obviously we can we can get incredible uh, whole whole nutrition from this one seed so it has so is that a question Oh yes, yeah. I think that's a source. Sorry, um, I think that's sourced from Jack Hera in *The Emperor Wears No Clothes*. Uh, it's a very popular figure, but it's been challenged heavily by experts in the hemp industry, including Ivan Bosker. And ultimately, that's like 
it's a nice chart, but that, that fact is just way off. And so is the pesticides thing, because um, various pesticides, including you know, organic ones, are used in cultivation and fertilizing. Anyway, never mind. No, no, so, no I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, no, this is um, yeah, an infographic attempting to show the, the uses of hemp. Um, unfortunately, yeah, some of the facts have been reputed. Um, and it's, it varies from, from area that you're growing and variety that you're growing. And as you mentioned about the, the pesticides, obviously the roots uh, do drag up anything that's in the soil. So it's, it re replenishes uh, nutrients. Uh, but the, the roots also take on any heavy metals or any, any pesticides and herbicides residual. Uh, for a long time, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a very good point. Um, but the roots also in, benefit the environment. Uh, so obviously, if you're growing on organic certified soil, uh, that's a standard that we've all come to know and uh, understand. Um, but it's we need to go beyond organic certification. We need to understand kind of uh, in rotation how is this crop going to behave with other uh, tomatoes, le legumes, or kind of grains, or what, what, el what else you're kind of growing on it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's basic in information which we need to kind of actually channel some more, um, more fact-based evidence. And at the moment, there's not much information about the UK industry, about UK growing. Uh, so I grow one particular variety because it's, it's, it works very well on this, on this latitude. Um, and it's had a very good seed yield. So beyond kind of any expectation, um, very lucky uh, to, to get a, a good yield, but it was also... Um, it has its pitfalls as well. So, um, unfortunately, there isn't the information available on di different growing varieties um, currently. So, this is what we're all kind of trying to change and have test plots for different varieties um, to, to really understand the kind of clinical, um, the, the kind of uh, the yields that we're going to get. Um, so, obviously, uh, the diverse applications, um, and that would, would vary uh, from seed to seed. Uh, but it also is very much restricted um, by our ability to process uh, hemp. Uh, and unfortunately, at the moment, we're, we're not very um, uh, ready uh, to process uh, fiber. This was uh, part of the industry which was basically built up, and large areas of the country were growing hemp specifically for uh, hemp core. And unfortunately, when that went bust, uh, it caused a knock-on effect to the whole industry. So the whole industry then kind of fell flat on its, on its ass, um, where farmers were growing, they had contracts, and when those contracts depleted, uh, they're shying away from growing hemp as a, as a resource. So they kind of forget the actual kind of benefits because there is no kind of supply chain, there's no uh, infrastructure, uh, which we're trying to change in the UK at the moment, which I'll touch on in a sec. Um, so this is... Uh, from the from our first year of growth, I believe, um, and we're growing yeah a, a variety called Fanola, and it's um, yeah very uh, adept at growing in the south. Um, sorry. So it's in the last year. Um, I'll tell you about the the changes I've seen in the industry in the UK um, and the changes in the international industry. Uh, coming across different uh, people within the cannabis, and, well, industrial hemp network, should I say. Uh, it's, there's been a lot of uh, developments over here, especially with a lot more UK businesses um, who are growing, who are producing food products, and they're getting more and more um, customers and more attention on the market, which is great. Uh, but it takes uh, collaboration and cooperation for any of these systems to actually uh, work. So it's, there's a lot of different um, barriers to entry uh, when you're growing hemp. Uh, and like I mentioned before, it's the processing. So combining forces to actually um, to be able to afford these pieces of machinery and the infrastructure to put in place to deliver a product that the customers want. Um, we should be growing hemp everywhere. Everyone who should be allowed to grow hemp. It's a kind of, it's a use all. Um, so it's, it's strange that obviously we're, we're restricted by licenses and uh, we're restricted by a number of things, but the, the processing is, is an important aspect that we all kind of need to band together. Um, and it's, it's great that in the last year, the last few months in particular, uh, the hemp industry have kind of started to gather together 
to actually kind of um, establish a set of standards and um, a dialogue between each other to cooperate and to communicate in order to actually deliver um, a message. So we're, we're getting to the point where actually the hemp industry is making a revival. Um, there's a lot more people um, very much more uh, conscious of their eating habits and their dietary requirements. So veganism as well in particular is, is on the rise. So as a, one of the most complete sources of vegan protein, uh, hemp is obviously going to be on the agenda. So we need to help educate um, and use facts uh, in the right way in order to, uh, to, to produce yeah, to a, a good marketing. Uh, so we need to be able to reach the customer um, and that's, that's what we're aiming for. So the first few years for me uh, have been experimenting. Uh, so we've been uh, working out what, what different products we can, we can actually produce and what people uh, want. So it takes uh, a lot of information and market research and we can understand a lot from the, you know, the, the UPA and the, the cannabis social clubs and understand what people uh, want in products. Um, and it's, it's finding a, a way, in incorporating hemp, uh, obviously the CBD, derived from hemp um, without THC and it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's debatable, uh, there's a big debate on, in terms of what's better, if there's any better, but they're, they're cannabinoids at the end of the day. Um, so it's finding whether uh, customers want a full plant extraction, uh, whether they want a full prof pro profile, uh, or whether they want an isolate. Um, and it varies uh, significantly, obviously at the moment the CBD industry is calling for more isolate products. Uh, because it's uh, much easier to dose and to understand the, the levels of, of uh, cannabinoids that you're, you're consuming. So uh, that's, that's a very interesting, but obviously the entourage effect hasn't been kind of touched on. Uh, it's the, the entourage effect obviously is understand, understandably, it, it interacts with the endocannabinoid system a lot better if there are uh, CBD and THC and all the other cannabinoids and terpenes and uh, flavor profiles within the plant acting together. This is where there's a, a lack of understanding and knowledge and research um, going into understanding why, why that actually is the case. So in the last, well, in the last 20 years, this is finally kind of getting researched and as more and more uh, people are understanding about the, the benefits of cannabinoids, uh, CBD, THC, CBN, or the, the whole range. Uh, we'll find more and more uh, lab-based studies uh, to, to, to support uh, the, the use. So it's, it's fascinating to, to see, obviously, how, how the, the movement and the, the, the system progresses from here and whether the legalization of cannabis uh, develops. It's, it's a fascinating kind of situation that we're in at the moment. And I'm, Looking forward to hearing some more of the speakers as well. <coughs> so our, our primary product was for the seed. Uh, as I mentioned, it's the, the, the nutritional heart. Uh, and it's, it's the basis of, of my business. Uh, but I'm also trying to, to, to make use of every part of the plant. So collaborating with, with a number of different businesses and uh, institutions to research um, different aspects of uh, valorization of, of waste products. So in agricultural terms, if obviously waste products, um, we're trying to reduce the amount of, of waste that we're, we're not being able to use. Um, and that also develops other alternative sources of revenue for the, for the farmers. So to, <coughs> to, to triple crop a hemp crop uh, is the ideal. And we're, we're attempting to to work with every, every part of the plant, as mentioned. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really, uh, it takes a lot of, of work and it's a long-term studies. And these are the studies, obviously, which uh, they, they cross, uh, cross the cannabis and hemp uh, boundaries, because obviously cannabinoid studies are, are fascinating in terms of the, the medical applications and understanding why these phytochemicals interact within our endocannabinoid system. It's, it's fascinating to, to see that unfurl and actually kind of how that develops. Um, <clears throat> so
So, <clears throat> so gathering together um, a, a number of hemp companies is, is, a, is a great way to actually kind of stimulate the, the, the economy and the, the industry as a whole. Um, and also, obviously, it generates jobs and it it's raises the awareness. So we're all collaborating in an effort to, to raise people's understanding and educate them on the, the benefits of the plant. So it takes a combined effort. Um, so this is where we're, where we're going with uh, either the, the, the building aspect. Uh, you, can, you can build houses, obviously, from hemp. It's, uh, it competes on a number of different aspects in terms of the U-value, the, the thermo efficiency. It's, it's an incredible, incredible material. But we need, as a combined body, we need to be able to actually uh, inform the, the, the people, that, the policy makers and the decision makers in government and lobby those decisions to be able to actually incorporate it into clean building. So we need to have buildings which are, are fireproof and you can grow within the same area and you're not shipping around uh, concrete and cement around the world. It's, you're using chemicals to extract different uh, raw materials from the earth and shipping them around the world. It's, it's, it, does it, it doesn't make sense. So the whole, the whole aspect is, is mad. So this is why we're, we're trying to band together um, and actually create some, some driving force in the industry. Um, and there's uh, the proven model abroad is obviously a cooperative model. Uh, and that's how uh, with, with the most people uh, connecting, collaborating, and benefiting in different ways. That's how, um, that's how the, the model and the actual growing of hemp can work. Uh, when we're actually acknowledging the different uses and helping each other to, to market those, um, it's, it, it benefits everyone from the farmer to the supplier to the consumer at every stage. Uh, so it's, it's an incredible kind of opportunity uh, in terms of obviously the, the, the political situation that we find ourselves in, in terms of Brexit and everything. We need to be more control of our food security, so the, the, it's, it's, it's setting up for um, incredible kind of drive at the moment. So it's great to kind of band together uh, and see all these great people together. So again, the, the timing, um, obviously there's, it's been a long time coming uh, for, the, for the cannabis industry and it's been a long fought battle by Russ over in, in America and it's fascinating to hear his stories and see him come over uh, to see the, the UK scene un, un, unfurling and I'm, I'm learning day by day about the, the cannabis aspect. I'm, I, I'm very um, kind of very very new to it uh, but hemp is, is a passion of mine and it's, uh, it's we need to take uh, energy into the fact that we're, we're growing a very very resourceful crop so it's uh, we need to learn and take, take from the, uh, the Cannabis Social Club, um, uh, take a, a leaf out of their book, so to speak. <clears throat> so there's a, a number of threats as well. I, I mentioned about the Brexit uh, food security. We've got a number of threats uh, from uh, the international industry, obviously China um, are producing a hell of a lot for, for fiber. Uh, there's no way of kind of competing on a basis for that. They're also uh, developing a better, better seed quality. So the seeds that we're shipping in um, are very, very high quality. So we need to actually uh, generate as much value from the seed that we're producing um, to, to actually kind of win consumers over uh, and make them understand that obviously Hemp growing in the UK is, is, is benefiting the local, local economy and the local environment rather than buying organic certified seed from halfway around the world. So it's, um, it's, there's, there's a number of different factors. Uh, obviously regulation is, is still a, a struggle uh, with a 0.2% THC restriction. It's, it's a, a very uh, contentious topic. Uh, something that uh, the Swiss have, have recently adapted their, their laws and they've actually increase the, the, legis the, the, the allowance of THC into 1%, um, which uh, might not sound a lot, but it's actually, uh, it increases the, the amount of varieties, the potential uh, applications phenomenally. Um, so that kind of small uh, increase in, in, in um, actual tolerance, it, it has a, a very big effect, a positive effect. <coughs> 
Excuse me. So another, obviously, another change recently is the, the American Farm Bill. Uh, is they're adapting the, that to be able to actually grow hemp in the US again, which is, is great on a number of reasons because they've, they've banned it, they've been in the prohibition camp for a long time, so has we. Uh, it's, it's fascinating that they're actually going to be producing more hemp. So it's great to see what kind of research and the amount of resources they're going to pile into it instantly. Um, and obviously we, we can see from the, the American cannabis industry how much, uh, how much weight they can actually put behind products and, uh, and bring them to market very quickly. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. So we have um, this is a range of products, We're trying to launch a retail brand, um, but obviously working with other businesses as well to collaborate. So yeah, we are, this is where, so these slides are from a, another presentation. <laughs> So, this is the protein powder, which is, um, again, we, we're looking to bring all the processes in-house uh, to bring, bring the production uh, within the local area to grow and produce. So, yeah. So, it's interesting um, how the European Industrial Hemp Association uh, has kind of developed in the last year as well. Um, and how the, 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 the price of organic seed has remained fairly consistent. Uh, but the EU uh, conventional seed has, has actually fallen for the first time in 15 years. Uh, this is increasing in production in, in Europe. And this is something that we've got to compete with as well over here. Uh, so this is a, another reason why we're moving into kind of organic certification. As well as getting that accreditation and a reassurance to the, the consumer, uh, we're also kind of... Um, kind of stabilizing the market, so to speak. Uh, the CBD market and regulatory developments, uh, it's <coughs> obviously it's, it's been a bit mad with the MHRA issuing a, a letter to CBD companies uh, banning CBD products, or any, any product containing CBD, um, which are all cannabinoids. Uh, that's kind of contradictory when cannabinoids are, are naturally found in a whole host of other plants and lemons and rosemary. There's, there's cannabinoids and terpenes and flavonoids. So it's contradictory for them to kind of ban things outright. But they're, they're getting educated and I think uh, Association UPA again are helping to, to <coughs> actually educate how they're testing uh, these products rather than kind of getting very scared and instantly classing everything as a medicine because uh, they've all of a sudden they've discovered it uh, revolutionary. Uh, it's, it's a bit mad. So uh, I mentioned the, the patient-focused certification. <coughs> and these are standards um, for testing, uh, particularly CBD companies. Um, and it's, it's something that's been done over in the Czech Republic. And I'm, I'm learning, again, uh, that these standards are getting introduced over in the UK. Uh, so they're uh, mirrored on the US certification model, um, which is a very kind of <coughs> thorough and end-to-end -end process. So they look at. The, the raw material, where it's grown, the, the process has gone into it. They also look at every, every kind of production facility and how, how, uh, how good and how clean their, their extractions are. And it's a fully kind of, um, it, it helps to, to guide businesses. So it's, uh, it's, it's a positive thing and it's, it's good for us to be getting that in the UK as well. Uh, that's, that's the kind of international uh, accreditation and certification that we need to be kind of a, a, a aiming for. Uh, that goes across the hemp industry as well as uh, the medical cannabis and recreation cannabis, whatever it may be. Those uh, patient-focused end product uh, testing is essential to be able to actually add legitimacy to a business or, or to an industry. Uh, it actually it appeals, obviously, to the, <coughs> the market and it appeals to, to people who are the <coughs> very serious about uh, their health and nutrition. <coughs> so <coughs> we're, we're uh, again, we're like I said, we're banding together with a number of hemp businesses to to, to help drive uh, an, an industry focus. And there's a number of event, events coming up in the next couple of years. I think it's going to be a very exciting time for hemp. 
uh, particularly in the UK, with a lot, a lot of uh, different opportunities come up. So, yeah, exciting. I'll keep you, keep you posted. <coughs> so, this is my plans for the next three years. Uh, collaboration, getting quality uh, partners on board uh, to actually help develop sales and develop the kind of education and delivering content to uh, customers and to, to people who are interested in finding out more about hemp. Um, and there is a huge knowledge gap and it's a big smoke and mirrors and we can't let the media do our talking. At the end of the day, we can't let the broadsheets or even the, the sun or any of these tabloids take uh, one story and twist it to their own benefit because they'll spin everything. And again, they, they won't deliver the right facts, which I appreciate you <laughs> pointing out earlier. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, and acknowledging uh, every, every stakeholder uh, in the, the growing, the processing, and the, the, the end product of hemp. So it's, it's fascinating to, to listen to that. Um, and I'd like to thank you. Um, I think I'll take some questions if anybody has any, any questions they'd like to, to put. Um, is the UK, was it UK uh, Cannabis Trade Association, is that the one with Peter Reynolds? Is that the same that's CTA or is that yeah, a different CTA? Yeah. Same one? So that's, uh, that they were set up, um, yeah, which is, yeah. yeah, the UK CTA was something that um, I was uh, approached by with a, 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 one of my associates as well. Um, and unfortunately, it's not really the right fit for what we're trying to do. Uh, we're trying to band together a group of businesses who are very passionate about hemp and actually respect the integrity of the, pl the, the, the plant and see the long-term objectives of seeing our, our children and our children's children actually benefiting from hemp, living in a hemp house, uh, developing hemp uh, fabrics, uh, nano products, actually kind of like uh, smart fabrics. There's a whole host of different properties which we're not benefiting from at the moment. So that's, that's what we're trying to do as well. It's completely different to their agenda, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> um, has anybody else got any questions? What's that? <laughs> uh, how many acres of land do you grow? Um, so we grew 10, 10 acres in the first year. <clears throat> Uh, like I said, this is a, a kind of a test plot. Uh, but we worked, worked with 10 acres. They had a lot of problems because we were growing, growing naturally no pesticides or herbicides. Um, we had a, a, a big weed problem, um, which we had to combat at the end. Uh, we worked out that we had to, to, to actually prepare the soil a lot quicker, a lot better before sowing. Uh, just straight before sowing, it, uh, it's, it's the weed management. So we started with 10 and then we worked up to 25 acres. Uh, so in the second year, uh, we're looking, hopefully, around the same acreage and a, a test plot for different varieties. So that's what we're going to do. Later. So if we wanted to grow hemp uh, for ourselves or for our business, uh, how difficult or how long does it take to get the regulations done? Because I understand that you need to have a license from the home office and you need to have all these qualifications or something like this in order to be uh, in order to get the license so uh, how was the process for you and uh, if I was a new uh, comer what do you think uh, what do you what are the challenges uh, ahead uh, thank you yeah uh, well obviously you have to apply for a license through the home home office uh, and it's it's paperwork it's a bureaucracy you have to um, abide by a number of different um, rules, uh, but it's also it, it's very attainable. So people can grow, uh, but it's also being transparent in what you're growing. You need to buy the right the right seed. Uh, you need to do it in the right way. So you need to show uh, what, what area you're growing. So it needs to be very specific. So you re produce a report and you have to stick to those allotted uh, guidelines, basically. Um, but it's about developing a relationship and dialogue with the authorities actually kind of to get some kind of uh, encouragement 
into, into the industry rather than like inhibiting in it, the growth uh, they need to kind of in, in, encourage it so that's it Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Thanks for listening.